mentioned in our last newscast, Somerville has not been spared from the heroin epidemic sweeping the state. During the first three months of this year alone, at least six people overdosed here. Reporter Yu Xiao Wen has been investigating this issue. In the, in the previous newscast, she talked to Police Chief David Fallon. This time, she reaches out to a grassroots organization called Somerville Overcoming Addiction, founded by former addicts, their family members, and other ad advocates. This is usually put inside of a gym bag. In a kid's room. In a kid's room, you find a gym bag. Um, and inside, they, that's where they keep, and again, once again, these are not drugs, they're just aspirins, Tylenols. They end up with the pills in it. Um, Judy Walker and other SOA members hold workshops to teach parents about possible drug hiding spots. They hope the tragedies that happen to them won't repeat on others. It closes exactly the way it is. Uh, addiction has touched my life through my son. Um, he was incarcerated for a long time and um, had a child. Through, uh, uh, with a girl that was also addicted to heroin, um, which in turn caused the child to be addicted to heroin. It's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. Growing up in Somerville um, our entire lives, um, I'm pretty sure that my son suffered anxiety issues and he had learning disabilities. And I think that with my lack of not wanting to put him on any kind of medication while he was going to school, he started to self-medicate himself. I don't know, it kind of crept up on me, I guess. Grew up in the projects, I always idolized the wrong people. I wanted to be like them guys. Um, next thing I know, it just landed on my lap and I couldn't turn around. I was stuck, but I didn't start using until my later years, until I was about 25. And then I just went on a run from hell and it just ruined my life. There was no detoxes for me. There was no nothing. I didn't have health insurance. So you can't get into a detox without health insurance. You can get a free bed, but they're far and few between. So I just ran to the, the wheels fell off <laughs> and I ended up in prison, you know? Then Jimmy met Matt, also a former addict. Now he works for a treatment center and writes poetry to raise awareness about addiction. Raising my voice to the nation. Inspiration for every addict getting high in the basement. A kid trying to get clean as a detox patient. That they can say, I am one of the ones that made it. Matt helped Jimmy get into a recovery program. I have a similar, st you know, a similar... Uh, start to my drug use as Jimmy where you know I've always had the hardest time trying to fit in and I always fit in with the wrong people and uh, when I first started using which I'm sure same goes with you is there was no edu no nobody talked about what an oxycotton would do there was no hey this little pill is going to destroy your life and take absolutely everything from you it takes your soul it takes your family it takes your friends I'm Matthew Gannon and you will remember the name I'm not anonymous I remember I went in the bathroom, I looked in the mirror, and I was, you know, a shadow of myself. Like, I couldn't even tell you who was looking back. I didn't have anybody to turn to. I had no friends, I had no family, and, you know, I just had enough. Like, I knew if I continued this path, I, was, I wasn't going to make it. So I, you know, I attempted to get clean for the umpteenth time. But fortunately, for, for, for the last time I got clean, it worked. This is my son, Frank. Joanne Rivicio, another member of SOA, lost her son six years ago. My son actually worked for the U.S. Post Office, making $52,000 a year. And one day he had a motorcycle accident in Wuben, and that was, the, that was the end. That was the beginning of the end. For 10 years he fought an addiction with um, OxyContin. The Mass General doctor put him on that, which I don't understand because OxyContin, even, even though he had severe injuries, the OxyContin was generally made for people that were dying of cancer to help them with their pain. Not to be given to someone that just had an accident, what's wrong with even Percocets or anything that was, you know, less the strength of OxyContin. Um, he struggled. Two days before my son died, he cried to me and he said, Ma, I don't want to die. 
but he was in the process of getting the um, the employee assistance program in his in the post office to help him but the person that he spoke to in confidence that was a friend he said oh I think I'm going to be running for union representative and out of the mouth of this person without even thinking about what you're saying he said who would want to vote for a junkie and that's when everything spiraled and went downhill for him um, a lot of us have checkered past and we've all made mistakes in life but the fact is is we can turn our lives around and make something of ourselves you know we're not just a junkie oh i went back to school uh, i got my ged i got my age pass certificate i'm certified and uh, here I am today, clean and sober. Somerville Overcoming Addiction lobbies officials, does trainings, holds vigils, and organizes other events to raise awareness and to fight the heroin and opioid epidemic. But they are not the only ones fighting back. In my next segment, I'll take a look at some of the other efforts around the city. For Somerville Neighborhood News, I'm Yu Xiaoyuan. To learn more about upcoming events and to get involved in SOA, check out their Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Somerville Overcoming Addiction.